tension in your thumb is generally caused by one of a few sorts of things. And we've talked about ways to cure those things already. So one of them is that if your thumb is too scrunched up against your hand, you're likely to hold it and create tension. You're just, you know, you're going to try to control it and have it all scrunched up against your hand and that will create tension. Another thing is that in any position that your thumb is used to playing in, if you try to try to if you try to play it without really moving it, it will create tension. Even just sometimes holding your thumb up that, that base of your thumb, muscles in there, in, in your palm, that can be a place where you create tension. So how do we relax your thumb? That's the question you were trying to ask, right? So how do we relax your thumb? Well, I would suggest that you do some of the drills we've already talked about today, but just try playing your thumb very, very lightly and releasing tension as you go. You really have to be conscious of what the tension feels like and then how to release it as you play. Make the motion from the string to your knuckle very free, very fast, very easy, just like your thumb is almost falling off the string. And if you're not sure if you're tense or relaxed, because sometimes it's hard to tell until you're used to it, create a lot of tension. Push hard on that, on that finger. Make it all tense and then release it. Release it. Release it more with every note you play. Just let that tension flow right out of your thumb. And now you know what relaxation feels like. Relaxation is a product of the room that your thumb has to move and the fact that it is actually moving, right? So that's where your relaxation will come from. But sometimes we get into situations in our music where there are a lot of repetitive sorts of patterns and maybe a lot of faster finger work and the tension builds up in our thumb and we need to find a way to, to give our thumb a little bit of a rest. And that's where the technique called oscillation comes into play. Oscillation, like something is oscillating, it's going back and forth, right? And that's the way oscillation works as a thumb technique. It's actually a wrist technique. And what it is, is it's using a little bit of forward motion of your wrist to help your thumb play and to just take some of that tension out of your thumb. It's a wonderful way to regulate the, the, the tension in your thumb to give you a little bit more flexibility and to allow you to just relax. So uh, this is something that comes into play in trills for sure, but that's not the only time you would use it. A little repeated pattern like this might also be a place where you could use a little bit of oscillation. Oscillation I always talk about as turning a doorknob. Right? If you had a, a, a doorknob that was sort of spring-loaded, right, and you turned it one way, we're going to turn it forward. We're going to turn your wrist over your hand. If your hand is on the harp strings, you would be turning your wrist, your thumb, a little bit toward the column of the harp, turning it away from you. So you would turn that doorknob away from you, and then it would spring back into position. And that's what your hand is going to do. It's going to to turn over, your wrist turns over a little bit, not a lot, turns over toward the column of the harp and then back far enough just to replace. It doesn't turn backward toward you because your hands will fall off the strings. So just, it's a little bit of, uh, oops, a little bit of a wrist motion. It's hard to look at the camera, not look at the strings here. So it's a little bit of a wrist motion. turning toward the column. You're going to turn your hand toward the column and then just back to replace. And as you turn, you can relax everything. Relax your thumb, relax your fingers, relax your, oops, relax your wrist as I fall off the string again. So it comes up not looking. Just gently turning. Do this with your left hand too. I'm just doing this with my right hand for demonstration purposes, but both hands should do all these techniques. 
It's nice in a little trill to turn. It helps your thumb. Helps your thumb just. Oh, hello. It's great for an actual trill, too. I'm just going to play one and two repeated here. Sounds kind of like a, a siren, doesn't it? <laughs> but turning my wrist ever so slightly as I play allows everything to relax. Be steady and keep my thumb from getting fatigued. There are plenty of trill exercises that you can use for this, but you can use simple arpeggios too. Remember that oscillation goes forward, not backward. You don't want to tilt your hand way back and then fling your fingers down onto the strings. We're always looking to use less motion to make our playing more efficient. So don't do any motion you don't have to. But this kind of oscillation can help. It's using your wrist to help out your thumb and keeping everything relaxed at the same time, which is important.